Greetings, my name is Christopher Breen, and we are going to walk through CSC 535, week two, practice question number two, on the computation question involving Markov chains. So the first thing that we need to identify is that while we're presented with the battery charges in a table by day, we can really look at this as one continuous string of values. Monday, 7 a.m. simply transitions to Tuesday, 8 a.m. So what we've done is we've copied this raw data exactly as it's stated there into one single column all the way down. Notice that we stop at 169 don't count the first one so we have 168 values 24 hours times seven days that adds up 168 now the next step we did because the demonstration that we got that's how they did it right we could choose our states however we wanted because they didn't uh, specify that in the problem so we'll stick with uh, how the professor did it for now and we simply type in S9 for anything from 90 to 100, S8, 80 to 89, 7, 70 to 79, and so on. And we manually type that in all the way down. Now the next step is we need to figure out the transitions. And we want to do that as painlessly as possible. So what we're gonna do, transitions, and we're simply gonna concatenate our states. So I'm gonna do B2, I'm gonna get my S9. We'll go ahead and throw a greater than in there just to make it pretty. And then we're gonna do B3 to get the next state. So there you go. So S9 goes to S9. And then we're just going to drag this all the way to the bottom. OK. Now notice we have S9 to S9, and then our very last value, S9, and there's nothing there. We do not know what this 100% is going to go to next. That's the whole idea of the Markov chain to figure out the probability of what it does next. So this, just leaving it like that, is gonna take care of itself when we start doing the math. So now, just for readability, I'm going to enter the labels for our matrix we have state 0 through 9 state 0 through 9 okay all right, so now essentially what I want to do here is count all of the transitions from S0 to S0. We're going to create a formula for that that we can then just copy uh, and paste to the rest of the matrix. So how do we do this? We're going to do a count if for the range we want to look in the entire C column. We use the dollar signs to static to see so that as we copy this formula to the right in other columns it doesn't shift that C. Now for our criteria we need to match the text that we have in that transition column. So in our case that is going to be dollar sign E2 that gives us our S0 and we have our quotes greater than and and now we want F 
dollar sign one. So this will count the number of times we have S0 greater than S0. And we have none, which is to be expected. Now I can just drag this to the right, drag this down. And if we were to check our math against what the professor provided, we should see that this lines up perfectly. Now the next step is to convert this into our probability matrix. So in order to do that, I am going to identify here that we are doing M matrix to the first power. Make this a little bit easier to read. And then what I want to do is essentially take this value, the number of times we transitioned from S0 to uh, S0, and divide it by the total number of transitions out of S0. Forget what you learned in the video about separately counting each of the occurrences of a state. That gets you into trouble when you end up counting that last state that doesn't transition. It's, it's an unnecessary step. We don't need to do that. All we want to do is sum the total number of transitions. Now there is a catch. We do need to keep this static because we're going to copy this to other cells, other columns, and we don't want that, that range to shift on us. So we want the column to remain static and that column to remain static. And the row, we do want to change. So I'll put that there. I'm actually going to move this. I probably should have put another blank uh, row in there. So let's actually move that. Yeah. Okay. So I just moved this so that I can get some headers. We can still see what's going on. This is going to be M1. Still doing our first one. All right, so as expected, this should be 0. Now, I can take this across, and I can take it down. And there we go. Here is our initial transient probability matrix. Now, depending on what the question says, if you need to figure out what is uh, the probability of being uh, in state two, having started in state one after four steps, right? Or in our case, each step, each transition is an hour. So if the question was, it's 10 a.m., you have 90% battery at 5 p.m., actually, let's yeah, okay, we'll go ahead to 5 p.m. What is the probability that you have 70% battery? So to do that, we need to know how many steps. So 10 to 5, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 7 steps. So we need to figure out matrix multiplication by 7. So that's what we're going to do here. I know this is not actually part of this particular question. I just made that up to show you an important uh, feature or question that we may see. 
So how do we do the matrix multiplication? The first thing that we want to do to make this a little bit easier is let's name this. So we're going to take this matrix formulas define name and I have this from a previous entry and I'm delete that and so this is what you will see and I'm just going to name it M. Okay, so now this is M. So now if I want to do the matrix multiplication, I can say equals matrix multiplication and then put in both your arrays. So if I put M comma M, okay, I don't think this got named properly. Okay, I didn't have a range when I did it last time. So now I'm going to do M. There we go. So now that's named M. And now this, matrix multiplication, M by M, we get this. Now this is actually just M squared. This is not M7. So how do we get to M7 or 27 or 207? Unfortunately, there is no matrix to the power of in Excel without writing code and visual basic. So we have to nest many of these together. So essentially what we need is just this part right here. And so we can put as many of these in as we want. Now, this is going to be two, right, matrix just the matrix multiplied MM is now matrix to the second power. So this is second power, third power, fourth power, five, six, seven. Now we have to add that last M in there for that second array. And now we can simply close out all of our parentheses. If you get the count wrong, not a big deal. Hit enter. It will correct it for you. And there we go. So this would be m to the 7. So the probability of going from any state to another state is right here. What was the example we used? Going from, I don't know, what did we say it was? 10 a.m. going from, this would be state uh, 9 to state seven so nine going to seven there is a eighteen point six percent chance that that will occur that after seven hours you will go from you will be at seventy percent having started at ninety percent now if we need to get the average time, like it says here, that's our question, we need to get this to the steady state matrix first. Remember, this is, is the transient state matrix. The only time that we need the steady state matrix is to get that average time. If you are simply trying to calculate the probability of being in one state after X number of transitions, Right? And those transitions may be times, it could be hours, it could be whatever. In our case, a, a transition step is one hour. To do those questions, this is what you need. And then you just take it to the power of however many steps you're trying to calculate that probability. For average time, we need steady state. So that's the one we're going to do here. I'm going to copy this. Copy this. And then I'm going to do this again. Matrix multiplication, M comma. And then I'm going to come up here. And I'm just going to copy that. And so remember, this is to the power of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
Now we could try to do multiple iterations of this. We could go to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and see where our values um, stop changing. And that would probably be a, a good idea to do if you've got the time. If you're short on time, why not just hold down a control V, do this more than enough times to make sure you get to steady state. You can't go too many times, but you can go too few times. All right, so that should be enough. I'm gonna finish with that final M and then I'm gonna close my arrays. And again, if I don't get all the parentheses, that's okay, just hit enter. Um, okay, 64 levels of nesting. So it looks like 64 is as far as you can go in a given matrix. So let's call this 64. And comma. So that's two. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. Sixty. One, two, three, four, comma. Close. Enter. Fix. Boom. So there we go. So this is our steady state matrix. Now in order to get average time for one state to another, we simply take one divided by this probability. Call this average time equals one divided by I'm doing this right. Yeah. One divided by, and then I'm just going to grab that. And we don't need to worry about any static columns or rows because this one I do want to carry over. And here you have it. So here is, now these are not probabilities anymore because we did the one divided by the probability. So this is now the average number of transitions to go from zero to zero. So in our case we wanted to know how long it would take for a fully charged battery to drain to go from state nine to state zero. It would take 83.5 transitions or in our case, a transition is an hour, so that means 83.5 hours. To go from state nine to state one would only be 23.85 hours. To go to state two, 13.9. And there you have it. That is the Markov chains in Excel. Thanks for watching.